Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can rethink how you implement alerts in Swift UI. I'm going to use my favorite Swift type, and that's the enum, with an associated value to allow me to easily present one or more alerts on a single view. Before I get started, please leave a comment below if you enjoy the video, and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. So if this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. A couple of weeks before the release of this video, I published one called Two Swift Enum Use Cases, where I went over two techniques for enums to present different types of views in Swift UI. These cases were inspired by two tweets I saw on Twitter, and it turns out that this has been one of my most popular videos, and it's inspired others to try more things with enums. One in particular was this one from Jordi Bruin, where he referred to another tweet from Chris Wu about refactoring his code and organizing multiple alerts. Well, this is great, and I'm sure that the approach that Chris is taking is working perfectly for his project. In this video, I'm going to show you another approach for dealing with alerts. In the starter project for this video, and I'll leave a link in the description below, I have four buttons that, when tapped, I want to show a different kind of alert. The button titles describe what I want to show. Now, I've only wired up one of these buttons for now using the is presented initializer for a Swift UI alert. If I want to show an alert when I tap on another button, this initializer just won't work. I'll need to use the second initializer for alerts that uses a binding to an optional identifiable object. And this is where enums come in. Let's start by creating a new file that is a Swift file, and I'm going to call it alert type. I'm going to change the import to Swift UI, and I'll create an enum called alert type that conforms to the identifiable protocol. For alerts, there are really only three types of alerts. One with a default OK button that can have a title and or a message, and the message is optional. So I'm going to call this first case OK with two associated values, one for the title as a string and the other for message that is also a string, but an optional one. So I can give it a default value of nil. The second case will be a single button. And I will also have a title and an optional message. So we can just copy from the previous example. Well, it also has a single button, and I'll call this dismiss button, and I'll give it an associated type of the type alert.button. And the third case is one that has two buttons, one called primary button and the second secondary button, both of them of type alert button. So again, I'll just copy from the previous case and change the name and then change the dismiss button to primary button and add a second one called secondary button. Now I need to make this alert type conform to identifiable and I need a property called ID. Well, this can be a computed property and it can be anything as long as it's unique for each case. Now, because we're using an associated value, I can't use the raw value for a enum. So I'm just going to return a string that has the same name as the case. It'll never be used, but it does satisfy the protocol conformance that we need. Now the next computed property is where the magic happens. We can create a computed property called alert that is of type alert and then switch on self. And this time when I switch, I'm going to let Xcode generate the cases for me because I'm going to need to use those associated values that are provided. For the OK case, I'm going to use an alert, and when I type alert, I see that I have four different options to choose from for my initializer. And that may seem confusing because I only have three cases. But if you look closely at these options, you'll see that the first option for title only, well, the second has an optional message and an optional dismiss button. 
So I'm going to use that second initializer for two of my cases. For the title, we can create a text view and pass in the title associated value. Now the message is optional, so we can first check to see if we have a non-optional message and only use the message in my text if it's there. Otherwise, I'll just have nil. And then because the dismiss button is optional and we don't have any associated value, I can just leave it out. Of course, now that we know that the message is nil, we can safely force unwrap it here. Well, this same constructor works for the single button option as well, because it is basically the same, but this time we have a button. So let me copy and paste the title and message from the first case. And then for the dismiss button, I'll assign it the associated value. Now I've forgotten that we're in a switch statement and for a computed property, we'll need to return it. So let's mark these both with a return. So for our final two button option, I can use this option with the primary and secondary buttons. Well, the first two are exactly the same as the others with the optional message. Then for the primary and secondary buttons, we can just use our associated values. That's it. Now it's time to see how we can use it. So how do we use this? Well, first we'll need to change our state property from this Boolean and use our own enum. So let's remove the current implementation by removing the Boolean, the toggle, and the alert method. And I'm also going to collapse this navigator to give me more room. We'll start by creating a new private state property that's an optional alert type, and we can initialize it as nil. Now to invoke the alert, we'll need to set this value with some associated values. So let's look at this first one, the title only. We can assign it the OK case to our optional alert type. Now, I'm not sure why, but in theory, since we know that alert type is of type alert, I should be able to just start typing a period to get code completion for our associated values. And sometimes I can. But Xcode is acting up, so I'm going to type in the type name first, then the period, and then I can see that I got my code completion. So I'll choose OK. And then I can type in a string for the title, like this is an alert. And then because the message is optional, I don't want one, I can remove it here. To invoke the alert then, we can return to applying the alert method to our vStack, but this time we'll use the item content initializer. The item requires a binding to something, and that's our alert type. And the content is just an alert type for which we want to present the alert types alert. Testing this now, we see that by tapping on that first button, we're presented with the alert. Now we can simplify this method even further by using shorthand. So we can simplify the code as simply just $0.alert. So let's do our remaining buttons. For title and message, we're not specifying a button, so we can use that same OK case, but this time provide both a title and a message. For the single button, we can use that case, providing strings for both the title and the message. And then for the button, we can choose what kind of alert button we want. Again, code completion should work just by typing in a period. It doesn't, but we can force it for sure by specifying the type first, which is an alert.button, and then a period and then we'll see what our choices are. I'm going to choose a default type with an action. For the label, I'll just use this text OK. 
And for the action, I'll leave it blank, but I hope you can see that you can add your own action here as you would in any other alert. And for the final case where we have two buttons, no message, we'll choose the two buttons case, but I'll be removing the optional message. Notice this time, however, I am getting code completion just by typing in the dot. Xcode can be frustrating at times. For the title, I'll enter a string like delete profile. I'll remove the message. And now I have two buttons. The primary button is one on the right in a left to right language and on the left in a right to left language. And it's normally one associated with an action. Well, let me see if code completion works here. It does. So I'm just going to use the destructive type with an action. And the destructive type presents the button as red text, as a warning. And for the secondary button, I'm just going to use the cancel alert button type. Time to test. I can tap on any of the buttons and the corresponding alert is presented. I really like this approach, and I wouldn't have thought about it had I not seen that tweet from Yordi. If you like it too, or if you have any comments at all, please add one below, and I'd love to get your opinion.